Well, here is the board back. I think it came out really pretty well. So you see um, kind of in the last part of the, the final video of the series, in the outro, I guess, you, you see that I added in the schematic on front, and I think that was a really nice touch. So anybody that was be, would be working on this, they can see that these right here would be, let's say, the timing resistors, and these are your current limiting resistors for the LEDs. Um, as I mentioned in the video, of course we could have packed this down to a very tiny shape, but we, it wouldn't have been nearly as explanatory. So before we get started putting this together, the first thing you want to do is make sure that everything works as you believe it, it should, as in get your, your probes out and check everything for continuity. It's really easy to do something like, like say, you know, you got a pad here and you've already got your trace going to it and then you decide that it's not quite really level with this one so you grab it and you move it just a tiny little bit and maybe you didn't notice that you just pulled it away from the trace just a little bit and then you made it and now um, well you wire the whole thing up and you wonder forever you know why it's not working you start checking around and sure enough there's a broken trace okay so before we have to deal with any of that let's go ahead and set this to beep mode. All right, I know you can't you can't see this, but just listen, listen for the beep. Okay. Now, also, I just got these. These are really nice. They're um, they're not expensive. They're, I'm not saying they're they're the best you know probes in the world, but they're very very sharp. And I really want to have something like this for a lot of the the smaller work that I have been doing. Now, if you're going for test points, I do kind of like the other ones because if I leave test points out like this, just sort of raw and open, if I choose to use it that way, the other ones with the, the bigger tip, you can just sort of poke on it kind of like a pogo pin. It'll just sort of stay on it, and then you can test away, whatever you want to do. But these are nice. They're, I think that was Amazon $8. I don't know, whatever. So I guess I will just start here on ground. No, actually, I'm going to start with the power input, and from here, it should go to the front of each one of these resistors. And that it does. Then the other half of the resistor should go, you would think, right to this LED. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you go to check, and no, it doesn't. But this is what I was talking about with these jumper pads over here. And honestly, they could have actually been a little bit closer, but they do work. So this here will go to the tops of each one of these pads. Then it's going to flow through. One of these will be jumped. And if you jump the LED one, then the bottom should go to the top of the LED. So the current will flow down through here, come back through the LED, down and out and around. Now, if you move it over to the bypass, then again, the top is up here. The bottom one now goes not to the top. So check the things that it's not supposed to do as well as the things that it's supposed to do. It'll come down here and then just skip that LED altogether. Now, as you'd imagine, then this LED will run right into the collector of this transistor down here. So if you follow this down, you touch right here, uh oh, you don't get anything. Now remember, the schematic is for the logical flow of things per the schematic diagram, but our physical footprint was a BEC. And so Again, I, I wired it or drew the pattern on here as per the schematic, but that's not the way this thing actually works. So if it's B, E, C, this one should be the collector right there, and then we're good. Okay, then the next part is it's going to come into here, and if you want, you can check the test point, but it should go right into this cap, then from this cap to the test point, then over here to the base of this transistor. B, E, C. So it should be this one right there. And then we're all good, you see? So then go through and check everything else the same. It's just a mirror of everything, of course, right? So make sure, again, that you check the things that you do believe you should have and check the things that you shouldn't have. 
if you I mean not that you have to check every single freaking combination but you know check around a little bit one big one is just make sure you know if you go to power and ground um, and you get a beep you probably got a problem everything does seem to check out so we can go ahead and get to soldering the thing up but I just realized I didn't show you the back of this so I did think it was kind of thick but uh, that's just kind of is what it is. Um, here's the logo you see, and this is what I was talking about in one of the videos when we, we put it on the back mask. So can you see that? See that? So it's copper, but it has the uh, the hassle coating on it. So they, they run it through, um, kind of uh, flow some solder over it, blow it all off, and there's just the thinnest layer of, of solder in there. Now, by the way, there was a bit of a mistake. I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a trace that ran <laughs> right through my name, and I, I checked it, and it, no, it's all fine. But if you did this and you wrote your name over the top, I, 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 you might end up grounding out your circuit to somewhere possibly, right? And there is that. That's the first time I've actually put the KiCad logo on. It's kind of nice. And then you see down here, there is the, the serial number or whatever it is that they, they put on. So not too bad. Now the thickness, I did want to mention, I just sent off for another board and they have a, a thickness checkbox on at JLC PCB is the one that I just went to uh, most recently, this one and the one I'm talking about. Anyways, I checked smaller so um, I, I think I got like a one millimeter thickness and the price didn't change I the whole time I've been doing this I thought that if I ticked that mark that it would add something to the cost but it did not so we'll see how that goes when I get back okay let's put this down I'm gonna re jazz the camera around here so that I can uh, actually solder and film something at the same time so this is my HECO uh, FX951. Um, I've, got, I've only got one of these. I have several of the other triple eights, and they are wonderful. The, they're they're great, great, super great uh, uh, soldering irons. But anything like this, um, if you've watched any electronic videos, I'm sure that you've seen talks about this before. These these are much better and it really comes down to these tips I know it looks a little play school maybe it doesn't have that old enough tore up beat up enough look to to look like it's really good but the the tips and the element and the thermocouple are all in one so you end up having a a device that will recover from loss uh, from temperature loss much quicker than say the triple eights or you know anything worse than those so if I go to touch this to solder onto a pad and that pad let's say happens to be a ground pad that goes underneath to a huge flooded ground plane that's going to be a pretty big heat sink and it's going to pull heat away from the tip and it might take your soldering iron the PID running inside there it might take a little bit for the software to realize that it's actually cold so then the temperature is going to drop and then when it finally realizes it then it's going to start to heat up but it will come from you know wherever the heating element is in here get its way through the thermal mass to the tip it takes a little bit of time I'm not talking days but you know it takes some time and these are much quicker so to grab one over here let me get a reach over everything so here's the stack since I'm on this rent here is the tips that you replace so here's a nice big fatty one here, but you can see here's the element run up through here. And I don't know exactly where it is, but I'm assuming it's probably the thermocouple um, or thermistor. I'm not sure. Probably a thermocouple, right? Because it's hotter. It, it's going to be up in here somewhere. You can get that, get a different kind of a chisel. And then the one that I'm currently using that I love is these hoof tips. So the hoof tips are, uh, well, there's a hoof. Uh, I, somewhere back I, I did a video on the different types of tips so you can go to the the Hakka website and you can see that but this one here if it's reflecting right in the camera it is a hoof with a bit of a concave in it so it will hold a little bit of solder in there so if you're doing drag soldering or even if you're just soldering 
it's nice that it has a little bit of a well to hold some um, solder in there. Okay. Now these are, so the triple eights are about around $100, give or take a little bit what day it is. These ones are about 250-ish, again, give or take. It is quite a bit more, but I feel like if you're looking at spending $100 on a soldering iron, if you're not down in the dumps and you're going, I just need to solder something a little bit, if you're not really into this, you know, then I guess you get a cheapie and that's fine. But I feel like if you're spending $100 on a soldering iron, you're kind of committing a little bit. And then maybe if you just wait, let's say a paycheck, then maybe go get one of these. Just kind of my opinion. Everybody seems to feel that this is the, uh, the, the soldering iron to use. I have my SMD resistor kit here. And what I'm gonna do first is pick out uh, some resistors for you know this upper area here. So these are going to be the, uh, the the current limiting resistors for the LED, and then right here will be the ones that we'll use for part of the timing of of the uh, the output, the off on, the flashing. Now the current limiting ones are in this particular instance not even really needed because I'm going to be hooking this up to a bench power supply, and you could just drop it down to you know whatever your LEDs require but I am going for you know for the sake of uh, completing this I guess I'm going to assume that let's say that we're using a uh, 1s lipo battery fully charged so f uh, 4.2 volts and uh, that gets me roughly like a 70 say 70 ohm resistor that we'll put into here now for the timing ones I'll probably start off with something around you know 30 40 50 uh, probably 40 some K and we'll try that in there and then for the capacitor down here I'm thinking somewhere around 10 or 20 microfarad um, but that might change because part of it is I'm not sure what I have for capacitors right now at the moment and then the LEDs um, they are just uh, some I, I've, I've got some Cree blue LEDs around that I'm going to throw in there Okay, so I'm telling you that all up front because I'm just going to lay this down, get to soldering, uh, we'll go to fast motion, and then we'll discuss some stuff when I get done. Now this is a great reason to keep old things around. I've been robbing things off of this board for a while. This was, uh, is, well it is, an NVIDIA Quadro 4 that I spent a lot of money on once upon a time, but it's, it's, it's seen its day. So um, I've got one cap down here, but that's, I need two, and there's nothing really on the back. So what I found was this old thing here. Look at that. Uh, on the back, I've got quite a few large caps that might work out well. And, well, we'll test them out, okay? So let's set this down here. I'll grab some fat tweezers. Go ahead and try to pull one of these off of here. Well, that was a little tougher than I thought it was going to be, but uh, we got them. Now, if I check, um, we don't really know what this is, so maybe I'll, I'll go set it to 2,000, let's say, right? So I go here and go, okay, eh, about 24. At least, you know, I'm trying to figure out where it's going to fall on the scale. So I say, like, okay, so I got 0, 2, 4. So it's 24 microfarads. So I'll bring it up here, and then maybe I can get a little bit better read out of it. There, I can hold a bit better. So about 23.5, 23.6. So it's probably a 22 microfarad cap. Now if I check another one, 
continent C, yeah, 23.5, about the same. Then I'd come over here, nothing. Check it again, yeah, 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 about 23.5. Oh yeah, wait, is this one? Oh, I'm kind of getting a read on these. Anyways, one of them, one of them I was checking and I, I, I thought that maybe I probably kind of killed it. But they look like they're kind of okay. I know I, I cooked the living crap out of a few of these in the process. Okay, so these will probably work, but as you can see, probably. They're a little bit big for my pad. I could have grabbed some of the other ones off there, but I thought they were kind of too small. So I'm going to see if I can work with this. Here's a little trick I picked up. I don't know if it's good, bad, or different, but I've got my I've got my little paste flex. You might have seen me do this before, but I I, I thought the paint the flux pens were pretty good, but then I just got a, myself a paintbrush, and that works great for just dabbing in where I want. But when it comes to these little SMDs, if I want what I can do is I can just grab this little bugger that I've already gooped all up. Just dunk the damn thing in here. You can't really have too much. We're going to hopefully clean it up, right? But you'll, you'll, god damn it. <laughs> uh, you'll, the flux will help hold this in place is what I'm getting at. Not that it's magic, but it's just going to kind of keep it from running all over the place. Let's we'll see if I can just kind of hold this in place. The nice thing about the coating, the pre-coated boards, is that you don't really have to tin them beforehand. Uh-oh. Let's see. Eh, kind of got there. Yeah, I think that might have worked. Let me get the iron down here. And then there are the probes. The nice thing here, we've got the two test points right on the sides. Can't see what I'm doing. Got these two test points right here. Now if I touch right here to here, right? And then from here, it's down. So that's gonna work. These are the Cree blue LEDs, and from what I have read, they are the ones that are responsible for the actual creation of blue LEDs. Prior to that, they're all just a, uh, a um, blue plastic. Then if this will focus, what I want to show you is on the LED itself, that band, that white line that you see going to uh, on the left-hand side of it, think of that in this particular case like the blocking line on the schematic of the LED itself. So when this goes on the board, it's going to go this direction, if you can see through the goop there. Then when you go to solder these down, just remember that they are plastic. So when I get in here with my iron, get some solder over here, get it lined up, hold on to it, get in, get out. Sorry for the bad camera placement. I'm trying to do my best to work around this. 
and the same on the other side. It should be held down now, so just hold on to the board a little bit, get in, get out. Okay, and then if you want, check it for connectivity. That one sucked ass. Look at that. I don't know if you can tell that, but it's all crooked as hell. So carefully hold it down. Tap. Hopefully that'll fix it. Piss. Okay. I just bought a few more of these. These are these aid tech uh, SMD boxes. So these are, these are super great. So you see what I got going on here. I don't really have a great rhyme or reason to what I'm doing with these yet. Um, the next ones I get, I think I might start, now that I'm getting more of them, I think I might dedicate them to just all LEDs or I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I would not probably use these for your resistors. This would not make sense, I don't think. Get get the books. Okay, so I think this is the guy that we're using here. We'll just go ahead and go for it and hope that it works. Drop it in there. Sup. I'm also going to need a bunch of these, and these are all of my test points all across here. These are what I was showing in a previous video, that they're just a picture of them. Come here, come here. So can you see? It looks just kind of like a little eye of a needle. So we're going to stick these down in the uh, some of the test points, at least where the input goes, but we'll do that in a second. And for the sake of expediency, I probably will not put all the test points in that I did previously. So here I'm going to line this guy up, and let's let's get you back in here. Definitely check all this for continuity. So, there you go. The, that should do it, but what we want to do is I'm going to bridge these LED jumpers. Just dump it on there. See so what I mean? I could have probably made them a little closer. Same over on the other side. Um, as you can tell, this... Uh, the regular flux will burn uh, your your typical rosin um, cord um, solder is going to burn a lot easier than this red stuff I use. I've been liking this for a while. I don't know. I don't. I don't really think that's the name. Hot Max. It's just this in ruby red seems to be pretty okay. Easy to clean up. So then this capacitor over here should cut across to the base, which is actually this first one here. So that's true. Um, and, and by the way, I'm trying to do my best to touch what I believe would be the pin on the top. If I just slide it in from the bottom, then I'm kind of guaranteed to hit the pad and then it's going to kind of defeat the purpose of me testing this. Then here coming down should go to the collector, which should be right here. That's good. And then emitter is ground. So 
but I think we're all right. OK, so I'm going to take this and get everything all cleaned up. I will put a couple pins in here, and let's, let's go test this. When I use these, I like to consider how I'm going to grab these. So if I come in with the mini grabber, am I going to want to hook it this way or am I going to want to hook it this way? So you kind of decide what you want to do. You know, this this is fine too. You know, you might turn it at a 45 so then this keeps your probes kind of hanging out. I'll go with straight back. Now, the part that's kind of tricky here is you're going to have to hold on to this somehow and then flip it over and solder it. And <laughs> you're going to get burned. So you can find something to hold this with, but I don't want it to go, I don't want it to, to fall over. I want it to be nice and straight as possible. You know, if you're being really slick, then maybe what you could do is what I kind of did accidentally before was make your holes a little bit, a little tiny bit too small, almost interference fit, then you can stuff them in and they'll, they'll, they'll stick right up. So I'll take this, put your big boy pants on, and solder that, get in there, go like that, ouch, 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 and then take your hand off it, okay? <laughs> That's how I do that. That, hold it there, get some goop on it. Make sure I'm holding straight. Two, ouch. Yay. Clean up. Okay, so here is our power supply over here. We'll go ahead and connect this thing up. I've added a few more test leads on here to make life a little easier. We'll connect this and over here, so here, let me move the knob a little bit. Watch right there, right? So because we rated this with our, with our current limiting resistor right here, for a full, fully charged 4.21s lithium battery, we want to check. We want to crank this up to 4.2. Now, the current limiting over here, you know, if you're feeling chicken butt, you know, go ahead and roll this down a little bit. But I, I, I feel confident that I kn we know what we're doing here. So we'll go ahead and turn this on, and there you go. So now, based upon the time constant we have with these timing resistors right here and these ca capacitors down here, this is what's giving us the flash. And so as you change these out, you'll get different rates. And then what's kind of neato too is if you make, you know, you will be inclined to change them out with same and same, same and same. But if you make these two here different from the first set, you can then change your duty cycle. And that's kind of fun as well. Now, I, I have the scope over here because I wanted to show you what the output looks like. This is with the LED jumped. You can hit the bypass over here to bypass the LED, but for the sake of trying to shorten this thing down, um, I'll just show you what it looks like with the output of the LED. If you do bypass this, you will have to go ahead and change out your, um, your timing resistors here and possibly your capacitors, it will work, you'll see stuff, but the, the wave will be a, a little bit weird, you know, so play with it, right? That's kind of the idea. So we'll connect this up here. So this is ground, this is just a ground attachment there, and this is the output from the schematic that you, you can see from right through the middle here. And, you see? So again, it's, uh, 
it's it, you, you got a little slope there from from capacitance and you can even see right in here that the light they, they don't actually go off all the way so there's going to be a little bit of juice hanging around there and you could figure that out by changing things around in here to try to make it a little bit better and of course adding extra things on the the the, the end of this so this again is just a basic circuit and if it doesn't quite get you to what you want if it doesn't quite work for any kind of like a, a digital timing signal or something that you want to have we'll clean it up try to make it better then that'll do it for the a stable multi vibrator project this has been a multi-part series on PCB design, but using these simple circuits as a vehicle to go through KiCad from completely start to finish. Now, hopefully you found something useful in here, but if a four hour video on A-stable multivibrators is not, you know, your, your thing, then I do have these other videos called KiCad Shorts, where I focus on a, kind of a single element of the software and try to keep them under about, say, 10 minutes. See you next time.